Hello friends, this is Slidehan for you. To visit my channel, type www.youtube.com slash Slidehan. In this video, we will learn about circular queue. In our previous tutorial, we learned linear queue. Linear queue has a disadvantage and we can overcome that disadvantage using circular queue. Let's see what is the disadvantage and how we can overcome the disadvantage using circular queue. We have already known a linear queue is a linear list of elements in which insertion takes place one end called rear and deletion can take place on the other end called front. Suppose this is a queue of integer, rea is at index 4 and front is at index 2. Now I am going to insert some values to this queue. First I am going to insert 9. Then I am going to insert 4. After inserting 4, we reached at the end index of the queue. Now if we try to insert another element, we cannot. Because Rhea holds the maximum index and we can't increment Rhea anymore. So queue operation will fail. But you can see here, there are some space available left side of the front. If we try to insert another element, it will show Q is full, NQ is not possible, though it has some free space available. So space is wasted. If we dequeue more elements, more space will free and more space will wasted. Now the question is, how we can overcome that problem and use that free space? We can overcome this problem using the concept of circular queue. What is a circular queue? A circular queue is a queue in which first index comes after the last index. For this example, when we reach at index 6, the next index will be 0. We will go from here to here. If we represent it as a circular queue, then it looks something like this. Rhea is at index 6 and font is at index 2. From here you can see the next index will be 0. Here we don't get the next index simply by incrementing the Rhea by 1. In circular queue we get the next index using this formula next index equal to Rhea plus 1 modulo n. n is the size of the queue or the total number of elements in the queue. This modular operation gives us the remainder on dividing by n. Let's see an example. Current index is at 6. To get the next index, we perform the operation as 6 plus 1 modulo 7. 6 plus 1 is 7, so 7 modulo 7 is equal to 0. So next index will be 0. Let's see another example. Suppose Rhea is at index 4. Next index equal to 4 plus 1 modulo 7. 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. 5 modulo 7 is equal to 5. Because if we divide 5 by 7, we will get 5 as remainder. To get the previous index, we write the formula as rea plus n minus 1 modulo n. n is the size of the queue. Ok, next we will learn how to write algorithm for NQ operation. This procedure insert an element item into a queue. Before insert an element, we need to check either queue is full or not. If next position of rea is equal to font, then we can say queue is full. In case of circular queue, we find the next position as rea plus 1 modulo n where rea is the current position. That's why we write the condition as if rea plus 1 modulo n equal to front, then we write q overflow and return. If q is not full, then we check front and rea equal to minus 1. Then we set front and rea equal to 0. Else we get the next position using this statement rea equal to rea plus 1 modulo n. Next, we insert item at queue rea and then return. Let's enqueue some values to this queue. I'm going to enqueue 3. Queue is not full, so we come here. 
so 6 plus 1 modulo 7 is equal to 0 next day of position is at index 0 we will insert 3 at index 0 similarly we insert here another element and new rare is at index 1 now I am going to insert another element first we check this condition here rare equal to 1 1 plus 1 modulo 7 is equal to 2 here font is also 2 so this condition is satisfied and we stop here next we learn how to write algorithm for DQ operation this procedure deletes an element from a queue and assign it to the variable item deletion operation is possible if the queue has at least one element if queue is empty DQ is not possible so first we check the condition as if front and rear equal to minus 1 then we write Q under flow and return otherwise we delete the font element now we check if font equal to rare if font equal to rare that means Q had only one element that we have already deleted so now Q is empty and we set font and rare equal to minus 1 else we increment font in circular manner font equal to front plus 1 modulo n DQ algorithm is completed. Let's DQ some elements. Q is not empty, so this condition is false. Next, we execute step 2. According to step 2, front element will delete. So, 7 is deleted from here. Next, we check this condition. Font equal to rare. No, front is not equal to rare. So, we come here and increment font in circular manner current front is at index 2 so 2 plus 1 modulo 7 is equal to 3 so next font is at index 3 ok next we will learn how to write C code for circular queue first I am going to initialize the size using hash defined preprocessor hash define size 10 next I am going to initialize an integer array to store queue elements int q size to perform in q and dq operation we need two parameters one is rare and other is font i'm going to initialize font and rare equal to minus one int rare equal to minus one and then int front equal to minus one here we initialize the statements as global so that we can use these statements anywhere in the program. Next we write the main function. 